Shangri-La. Well, I know about this anime Shangri-La from three different, well, no, four different sources. One from my friend Wyatt. Two from you guys, beautiful creatures in the comments. Three, I had seen it on a website. Allegedly, and allegedly. Four, I think I'd seen someone else's thumbnail, as well as a little bit of someone else's video. And I was like, you know what? I think I should probably post something about Singer Law and actually, you know, watch it and, and get my thoughts on it. It seems like for the most part, I'm actually liking Singer Law a lot for the most part, but there's only one tiny insignificant problem that I'll get into way later in the video. But first, let me talk about the story, then we'll get into the positives, then the negatives. We'll go in that order, because that's usually what we always do. Like and subscribe, it helps. But the story first I saw with Sun Rackle, and I'll stay with their gamer names, because I think it's a way better thing to say than the actual regular names itself but son raku and he basically plays a whole bunch of trash games to completion because he just loves how trashy or buggy the game could possibly be and he has fun with that right he beats his last game to completion this buggy disgusting mess of a game to completion that he really hated he gives in the game and then he's like oh i don't know what to play next so the cashier lady suggests hey play shangri-la frontier so you can change it, it up a little so bit lovely. actually play a good game instead of a bad game and she certainly doesn't have any ulterior motives for him playing an actually good game for any good reason at all spoiler alert there's a girl that's really stalking him and then actually really likes him and she plays shangri-la so the cashier lady trying to help out the girl by telling the guy to play shangri-la so they can meet and play each other and maybe even fall in love now with the story out the way i want to get to the main pauses right i have to give my kudos to the writer itself for what they're able to do now i don't know if they're one just study the art of gaming or gamers as a whole for like i don't know how long to understand how they are or the obvious situation which is that, that this author is a gamer themselves and they know the work around they know games they know people inside of games you know how people react and talk in games and this is done so good in many many ways one i'll go over the game itself right the game itself definitely feels like it's a i'll say an mmo but also mix it with like maybe a souls born type of game that has a whole bunch of status elements a level system critical hits npcs but it's a little bit more advanced obviously like in this different world where we have it like the ai is like super advanced and now they talk back to you because also you have to make it a little bit more interesting because the anime right then there's also the realistic grind that happens where certain games right like one you can just grind your life away to try to earn levels or try to be leveled up or over leveled for a certain mission or certain main mission or boss or one of the most funniest and most realistic gags i did see is like the fact that you're not leveled up enough to have your equipment so you can actually equip the most overpowered shit that you have made up until this point but you're just under level so you can't use it then there's also the realistic things that people will do in gaming right as a huge positive that i want to say is the fucking toxicity it's an evil world we live in two things we don't do we don't give money back and we don't say sorry huh the toxicity will always be there no matter what you do or no matter what happens and no matter if it was 10 15 years ago or even right now it does not matter it will always be there now there's some positive toxicity and i know I'd, that sounds weird but positive toxicity where like you're with your friends and you guys are just fucking around and then you guys like, either make fun of each other and that's just how you guys play and you guys have fun with it right then there's the negative toxicity where you either do a lot of player killing you do a lot of griefing you just become a whole huge asshole even to random people that you don't even know and honestly not thinking about it, it just sort of brings back a whole bunch of memories i used to be on the xrc60 or if you were on your ps3 at that time and era how it was pretty bad where people would say pretty much anything to you at that point i, I even right now to this day i could probably go into a regular call of duty lobby right now and get called the that's it. Anyways, back on topic. But the whole point of it is that you guys just come together. You guys have a really good time, fun time. And then you basically go to another game or you just get the hell off. With you having, honestly, unimaginable fun as well as bonds that last your lifetime. And then maybe you even meet the person in real life. Potentially. But moving on to the other positives. The other positive I have to give is like the music. It was two separate times in this show. I think it was like back to back episodes potentially where the music came out and it came out of fucking nowhere. But it was straight bangers back to back. And they were so good that honestly. Honestly, I'm sort of hoping that more songs do happen or do randomly come up in the show as we progress forward with the show. Then there's also just the terminology as well as there's some more other realistic stuff I do want to talk about. But the terminology, i.e. player killing that happens a lot. Or you just having like a meme build or a meme looking character for the hell of it. Some games that we might even love that are buggy and glitchy to hell but we just don't give a fuck and we still play them. Another positive I want to go over and talk about is the characters. Like one of the things I do like in this show is how they do have like the AI right but they go over it in a way of like oh it's so advanced that it's able to t talk back to you to a certain degree and give you some different dialogue or just the main character Sunrack and his love for 
fucked up, bad, shitty games that he just loves to play. We sort of get like a glimpse and sprinkles of like his life as we sort of progress through the game a little bit. Or if we see him go to a different game and how he acts there, or even his at home life with his family. But I really do like the rivalry between him as well as Oi Sezo. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm bad at names. Anyways, him and Oi Sezo, I like both of them together because like it shows like the way like you would act towards you and your friend is like being sort of rivalry when it comes to playing games. It's sort of like a funny trash talk element to it. Then there's sort of like the last person to party, which is Pencil Gun, where that person's like sort of the, realistically the most toxic person when it comes to playing the game as well as the person that's the most hardcore into it, but sort of in the most fun way possible. But where her character basically is showing that even some of the people that are like this are have a soft spot for some of the games or some moments in gaming where they're like, okay, all right, I, I won't be like that, my bad. But you know what? That's a good stopping off point for the pauses. Let me get straight into the negatives, right? So my negatives with this game is like, one, I don't know if I'm too old or whatever the fuck the case is, but my goodness gracious, so when it comes to the subtitles, the subtitles come in with the quickness and leave with the quickness like the fucking flash. I don't know what it is, but I had to pause, sometimes rewind it to like get it. And that's not really a negative on like, I guess the show's fault, but where the fuck is doing the subtitles? And then there's that other part where it's like the pacing, right? I think it was like for the last five-ish episodes, the pacing felt a bit off. And by what I quickly mean by that is like, we sort of have like an overarching goal, like sort of set up by the sort of the beginning-ish of the story, which is fine, right? Then there's times in the story where also you have the sub goals of what you're supposed to do, be doing at this moment in time, right? So this certain sub goal, right, is to specifically defeat this special unique boss. And then what it feels like to me is that we sort of, instead of just getting to that part or like we do maybe like one or two episodes of maybe some training or doing something else to get to that part of the game i feel like we literally just stall out a bit and certain things that do happen could have possibly been done in like five minutes or maybe even less but at least we did get some good stuff out of so the somewhat stalling i was talking about like one we did get the cool music parts that i really did enjoy out of it but then it sort of feels like it's still dragging off by the end even after the music parts then we have the parts i talked about earlier which is going to a different game now i did enjoy it right and i did enjoy the fact that it connects into the story where where we have to meet a certain other character to make him join and play the other game but then it sort of feels like why are we sort of here and we do sort of get a reason for why that person or the main character is back inside this other game but i don't feel like it's like that strong of a reason for them to really necessarily go back and it sort of sort of feels a little bit like we're wasting time to a certain degree so i'm hoping that it connects back into the story in some type of way or form or fashion but other than that i had a really good time watching shangri it's almost it's more than halfway done at this point so i definitely highly suggest anyone if you're a gamer out there you like anime or if you just want to see what it's a little bit what it's like to be a gamer uh, to a certain degree or a certain point Go watch Shangela. It's a really good watch. I think it's definitely worth your time. And other than that, thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribing. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.